is that different institutions have taken different approaches and there are a lot of different options for how you would choose to implement the uniform guidance at your institution. Um, schools are uh, a mix of centralized and decentralized, uh, certainly public and private. Um, uh, some schools are taking full advantage of all of the flexibility provided in the uniform guidance. Others are taking a very measured, risk-averse approach. But I think uh, what we're going to do is talk about two different um, approaches that we've had throughout this process and um, uh, share our perspective. Uh, and really, there is no one answer. There's one answer or two answers uh, for your institution, but there's no perfect answer for, for the, that's a one-size-fits-all kind of a thing. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what our approach has been at MIT. Uh, we formed a cross-functional team um, in March, uh, shortly after the guidance was um, issued. Uh, we had started to read it. Uh, that was a, an important group, um, uh, which includes folks from my office, from procurement, internal audit participates with us, uh, several people from financial operations, including payroll, the controller, the Dean for Research Office, and we were getting together every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. We were the breakfast club, and we were literally going through the document, reading through the terms and conditions, and any other materials that had come out since the last time we met. And there were lots of different kinds of, of uh, publications from Kogar, uh, from Kogar and uh, uh, Nakubo and, and other sorts of groups. So, uh, so we were taking advantage of, of that opportunity. Um, We've formed a couple of working groups around campus because we're working on some projects around closeout. Uh, we had to come up with a definition of institutional base salary, et cetera. So, so we, we kind of do things collaboratively and in groups um, and uh, very much a consensus-based model at, at MIT. Uh, this has also gotten some visibility at the very senior levels. We've been keeping our provost and our vice president for research closely um, uh, in touch with what our plans are and what we're what we're doing, our risk and audit committee also has a keen interest in this, mostly because of the impact of sponsored research at MIT. And so, our internal audit and our vice president for finance group regularly updates the risk and audit committee. And our vice president, our executive vice president and treasurer, is very interested in this as well. So, that's been the approach that we've taken. Um, uh, lots of people involved. We've been working on coordinating communication. Um, and just trying to get everybody up to speed with what's going on. You know, we have a very um, diverse portfolio at MIT. We deal with almost every federal agency there is. Um, it's, it's important to keep in touch with what all that de deviation and variation is.